Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. I am John, and as always, thank you so much for being here. Solid topic. Let's do it. What's the most physically painful experience of your life? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. When my spinal cord collapsed down on the nerves going to my legs, I legitimately wanted to die. Toss up between kidney stones and appendix bursting. Wanted to die. Had an abscessed tooth. For two weeks, my life was nothing but absolute misery, and nothing would kill the pain. At one point, the dentist had to drip numbing agents on the exposed root because it would not freeze, and that felt like a hot needle being jammed behind my eye. Cue a new dentist phobia. That has me terrified to even call them when I know there's an issue. That time, a neurosurgeon drilled out the base of my skull, installed a plate there, and then drilled holes in my top two vertebrae to connect it all. Excruciating pain for months, but the first, or the worst, was the first two weeks. Anytime the pain meds wore off, I was in hell. It felt like nothing I've ever experienced before or since. I became an animal. I wasn't capable of human thought or anything but screaming. It continued for a long time in a more muted way. When I tried to turn my head reflexively, when I accidentally shifted it forward, but the worst by far was when I tried to sleep, because I had no control over my movements then. I just woke up screaming many times each night. There was no escape. I was tired all the time, terrified of falling asleep again, but also terrified of every potential movement. I had a very secure neck brace on 24-7 for months, but nothing was enough to stop the pain. Receiving adriamycin chemo, the side effects made me wish for death at times. When I was a kid, I was severely ill with a virus, which led to extreme dehydration. At one stage, I couldn't hold down food or water for days. I frequently woke up with severe abdominal cramps, but one night I woke up and thought my head was splitting open with the worst migraine of my life. I was in so much pain that I couldn't stand or see. I just curled up and begged for the pain to stop. My father carried me to the doctors, and my mother sat with me while the doctors told them it was just a virus and it will pass. The doctor had been saying this for nearly two months. My mother snapped and demanded the doctor to at least examine me and not dismiss me. The doctor quickly concluded my appendix had burst and brought me to the ER. The second my father carried me into the ER, the nurse just took me to the back and I was rushed to ICU. Turned out the cramps were also from dehydration and the virus caused my lungs to collapse and gave me pneumonia. The headache and cramps were something I never want to experience again and make sure to find a way to always be hydrated. I was in so much pain I didn't even notice my lungs were failing. Shattered my ankle getting hit by a car while walking. That wasn't the worst painful part. Went to the hospital to set it, cool. Was transferred to another hospital after a couple of days closer to home. They took x-rays and realized the set was not good, so they had to re-break my ankle and set it correctly. That part hurt the most. I have cluster headaches. When it gets very bad, I legit think about jumping out of a window. It's like someone stabbing your head with a glowing hot knife. And the best part is that you cannot really do anything about it. I was cleaning a fish on a boat and I accidentally popped its bile sac. Squirted me right in the eye. For like 12 hours after, it felt like my eye was melting and full of broken glass. It was so painful, I spent the whole time screaming in pain uncontrollably. Since I was on a boat in the middle of the sea, there was no access to medical help, so they just gave me a thing of eye drops and sent me back to work with an eye patch. For the next two weeks, I could only see out of one eye, and for some reason it was painfully sensitive to light, so I had to blink rapidly with my working eye while working my 18-hour shift while my asshole co-workers made pirate jokes about me. It was a bad trip. I was bitten by a rattlesnake on the ankle. My whole leg swelled up immensely would not recommend. When I got my IUD inserted, my cervix was propped open with forceps and then felt a really strong pinch and throbbing pain. The only time your cervix comes close to being that wide open and having stuff go through it is during childbirth. Ironic, because I was there to avoid that. After the procedure was over, I proceeded to vomit and then immediately ran to empty my bowels. My husband had to get me a wheelchair to bring me out to the car I felt so bad. Sweating, cramping, nauseous, and weak, for the rest of the day I stayed in bed. 
I could barely move because the cramps were so bad. I'm so glad I don't have to do that again for another 10 years. Having a miscarriage. As bad as my cramps are, so bad that I throw up, this was worse. I went ghost white, had cold sweats, blood pressure was 220 over 100, was sobbing without tears, and couldn't breathe the pain was so intense. Work rushed me out in an ambulance because I couldn't walk. It was during COVID, so I had to face the miscarriage alone, which made it even harder. Wisdom teeth removal with no sedatives or numbing agents besides Novocaine. My insurance only covered that, so that's what I did. The lasting mental effect is even worse than the actual procedure was. I was 14. I'm assuming you're a fellow American. At 14 years old, in my personal opinion, no kid should be forced to feel a lot of pain because they don't have insurance to cover it. I mean, does anyone else see a problem with that? Tonsillectomy recovery process. I read about rabies and the fear of water and somehow I understand it during my recovery process. Every time you swallow water, your throat tries to regurgitate it back out, but even the act of vomiting is painful by itself. Not to mention the scar recovery makes you want to cough every time, but afraid of opening your surgery scar. Also, kidney stones. My gallbladder failing. I was young and deployed overseas when it finally kicked the bucket. By the time I got to professionals who knew what was going on, I had a fully necrotic gallbladder in me that was sectioned off with a 3mm mucous membrane. I hadn't eaten for days, kept doing combat patrols, and somehow didn't die. It's all the haze after that, but I was evac'd all the way out to Germany, and then spent a few months recovering. Good times. Crashed in a road bicycle race at over 50 miles per hour. Imagine jumping out of a car going 50 and into a pile of bikes while wearing pajamas. That's what that was like. Broke both collarbones, had three nasty cuts that required stitches, and worst of all, my entire back was covered with road rash. My entire lycra skin suit was ripped away down to my ass, and I have embedded gravel throughout my back. They had to scrub the gravel out of my back, for which they gave me local anesthetics, but afterwards the pain came on like a freight train. Dull, burning ache all day. I had to wear second skin bandages for about 10 days that bubbled up with pus and needed to be drained. My collarbones sent shooting pain every time I was slightly jarred. Breathing hurt. Taking a shower was murder. I couldn't sleep on my back because it hurt too much. I couldn't sleep on my sides because my collarbones were broken. I had finals for my junior year in high school in the middle of this, and I could barely lift my arms to take the test. My bowel movement after the eighth day of 11 in the hospital on morphine. It took an enema to loosen it a bit, then a gloved nurse oh, had to assist by pulling the initial blockage out. It was on at that point. I filled the bedpan. It looked like a mountain when I was done. I was in tears. It was brutally painful. I have had a transrectal ultrasound where a large tube is forcibly plunged into your virgin butthole, severe PMS cramps, stepped on Legos, migraine, hell PF calves cramps, pulled muscle but toothache beats them all. One time I was alone in my university apartment and had this toothache, did everything, took a lot of pills to stop the pain, did all the home remedies on an every possible website, did all the yoga poses, but none worked and I didn't get to sleep a bit that night. Amazing how my mind can easily see suicide as an option to stop the pain. Wife accidentally rolled the automatic car window on her second generation Prius up on my thumb snapping the bone between my last knuckle and the fingernail. This happened to be the year and model before the safety mechanism was added. Honestly, worse pain than either of my two intestinal blockages due to Crohn's and the preceding surgery. I've decided that if I'm ever subject to torture and threatened with finger breakage, I'll instead sing like a canary. My body is naturally resistant to anesthetics. Trying to explain to the doctor responsible for my circumcision at 27 years old was pretty painful, lol. I'd say 15 of the worst minutes of my life. Also plantar fasciitis. F plantar fasciitis. Spinal tap, where the doctor couldn't seem to get it right. The man stuck the needle in my spine nine times. Ended up testing negative for meningitis, but my reaction to the spinal tap put me in the hospital for four days. Had shingles. Didn't go to the doctor until it looked like leprosy. The instant the doctor saw it, he said, Wow, you must love pain. The next year had a broken ankle playing baseball. While being wheeled into the emergency room by my nephew, he rammed my extended leg into the door jam. 
I think my eyes rolled back on my head with a mini blackout. Couldn't even cry. I got a horrible case of fungal jock itch from the dorm shower in college. I've handled athlete's foot plenty of times before, but the creases and folds of a scrotum are much harder to treat. The situation quickly devolved to when even topical antifungals were no longer effective, and I was developing open sores on my scrotum. Every single step I took sent shockwaves of pain throughout my body as I limped across campus between classes and the cafeteria. Fun fact, you can't bandage a scrotum. I had heard of liquid band-aids and assumed it'd be like rubber cement you use in school. What I didn't know is it's basically just nail polish. Applying that is literally the only thing in my adult life that's actually made me cry from the amount of pain I was in. Shortly after the open sores led to a secondary bacterial skin infection that spread across my thighs and lower stomach before I finally sought medical intervention. Oral antibiotics and oral antifungals finally resolved the issues. Two months of constant genital torture and sleeping one hour at a time before the numbing spray wore off and the pain woke me up has significantly raised my pain tolerance though. I also lost about 20 pounds because my hunger would have had to get bad enough to make me drudge through the pain of walking to and from the cafeteria, my only source of food as a broke college student. Well, let's see. In the army in 1997 at NTC in the Mojave Desert, I stepped on a cactus spine that went through the bottom of my combat boot into my foot. In 2007, I was awoken from a nap with the worst pain I've ever felt. A disc had herniated, actually two discs, and the nerve finally slipped in and got pinched. I had to wait two months of that pain to get a disc removed. Still had issues, and that's when the bastard doctor finally admitted there were two discs that needed surgery, but he only removed one that day. It was but a few weeks later I heard a report on NPR talking about how doctors would do that to guarantee two surgery payments from insurance. Bartholin gland cyst. It was so bad by the time I got the surgery I could have died if we waited any longer. The infection had gone inward. When I saw my doctor at my follow-up appointment he actually hugged me and said he had been thinking about me all weekend because of how bad it was. Ladies, Google what that is. It's less than two weeks for me to go from, hmm, this feels weird, to needing emergency surgery. It's just something that happens. I'm a very clean person and had gotten a pap smear just three weeks before this all went down. I mean this 100% seriously. When my parents wrote me a letter disowning me and stating their intent to get a court order if I didn't have my stuff out of their house in a week. I was always very close with my mom especially. Being ostracized gave me crushing anxiety and tore me up inside. I was physically ill for about two weeks and became almost non-functional. It was so deeply emotionally upsetting that it produced literal physical pain. Woke up after a liver transplant wrapped in a plastic tape, which, as it turned out, I'm allergic to. It wasn't till half my body turned red that we figured out what was wrong and causing such pain. I've been shot, had gangrene, migraines, and kidney stones, uh, passing I'm 77, but it was that damn tape I remember 